Hey everybody, today Rado runs down Robin of Loxley, but before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to Sherwood Forest, which is just overflowing full to the brim of all kinds of rich folk that are just waiting to be robbed so that we can steal from the rich and give to the poor. Although in this game, we're going to focus a bit less on giving to the poor and more on trying to increase our fame so we can prove that we are the greatest hood of all the Robins. So I am the red player, Jen is the blue player, and in addition to having our main character that travels around the board looting, stealing from the rich, we've got Bob bards in our color that will travel on the outer edge of the board in a race. And to be able to travel around this board, we have to complete a series of randomly selected objectives. Every time you play, there's a whole bunch of objectives that don't get chosen. So uh, in this game, we got to start out at the beginning and then do some coach robbery and then go to Sherwood Forest, become specialist, be a sly old fox, and uh, go to the Golden Arrow, the uh, Nobility Obli, you know, etc., etc. So, I am the first player, and what do you do on your turn? You take your knight token, because that's effectively what this is, because it moves like a chess knight. Um, a two up, one over, one up, two over, uh, one over, two up, etc., etc. So I'm going to move like a knight, and wherever I jump to, I will grab that loot tile. And what do I want? Well, I think I will start out jumping like this. Okay, so I have started my first collection of loot. I have one collection. Uh, a collection is one, two, three, four, however many tiles of a given color is a collection. So I've got one collection of blue loot. Right after I've exited that space, a tile gets put in to replace it. And it's another blue tile. And now, after you've moved, if you can complete, or if you can show that you have fulfilled the requirements of the next step on the bard track, you get to move the bard forward. The at the beginning, I have to have exactly only one collection. That's This is a symbol for collection. I have one collection, this collection right here, so I will move forward. And it's the beginning. Now, for me to move forward again by you know, completing a daring coach robbery, I have to show that I have one green tile. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have that. So I'm stopped in my tracks. I could move forward if I want, because at the beginning of the game, everybody has one coin. Whenever you want, you can spend a coin to basically bribe your way past whatever it is that's in your way so the bard can keep moving forward. I could do that, but I'm going to save my coin for when I get to a really tough one. Because some of these tiles are very, very easy to deal with. Some of them are very complex, uh, depending on whether they are day or night tiles, which again, is just part of the random setup. So that was my turn. It is now Jen's turn. Jen would very much like to get one of these green tiles, obviously, because we need it to be able to get past that coach robbery. But she can't, as they're too close, and she's got to move like a knight. So, with that in mind, I think Jen will move over here. Okay, so she now has a collection of one, a one pink tile in her first collection of the game, and then a black tile comes over there. Okay. So now, Jen also has a collection of one, so she can move on to the beginning as well. Her turn is over. It is my turn, and I'm very happy to jump over here. And hey, I've got my second collection. I've got a collection of blue and a collection of green. And so, that means I can complete the coach robbery. And, uh, what's even more, if I look forward, the next one requires, at Sherwood Forest, have two different tiles of green, blue, or black. It just so happens I've got a green and a blue, so I get to move forward again. Zip, zip, zip. Now the next step, unfortunately, I can't do because I have to have exactly three collections. I've only got two at the moment, so I'm stopped in my tracks. Unless, again, I wanted to spend a coin to move forward again, but... Um... No. Oh. Wow, I'd almost, I would almost move forward again. Because if I spend a coin to jump over here, the next one, Sly Old Fox, says I have to have the biggest collection of a given color. I've got the biggest blue and green collection, so I'd be able to do this one. But the next step says my knight has to be within striking distance of Jen's knight, and they're not. Striking distance means we are, could move into each other's space, which we're not normally allowed to do. So if I was in striking distance, I would probably uh, spend my coin because I'd be able to go all the way from over here to over there, and it'd be a huge jump. But since I'm, I'd be stuck right here anyway, I'm going to save my coin for later. So that was it. It is now Jen's turn. And Jen's got a, Jen still needs to get a green. 
So she's got to get over there. And um, how will she get to that? Right. Uh, that's going to be kind of tricky. But remember, Jen can also be paying attention to where she's going. She knows she needs this green, but after the green, she needs to have two. She needs a black, blue, or a uh, right. So if Jen wanted to, Jen could come over here, let's say, and grab a black. So now, once she gets the green, and she left behind a green, once she gets the green, she'll. Oh, sorry, that's Jen's over here. She will have the two things she needs to be able to jump forward. I mean, I might be look like I'm pulling ahead, but you can often make huge big jumps to come from behind uh, as you're doing your set collection and trying to get the right stuff. So that was Jen's turn. My turn. All right, it really uh, doesn't matter where I jump to as long as I get a new color, because then I'll have three collections, which will let me move past that. Um. Although, what I'd like to do is get into a position so that when I make the jump here, I am within striking distance. And I'm not currently. I'd need to be one over because then I'd be in striking distance. So maybe I should try to move in such a way that I could get towards striking position. But to do that, I need to figure out where do I think Jen is going to go. From where Jen is, she cannot get to a green. But hey, if she jumped here or here, she could get a second black. So she could start making a bigger collection, and there is a reason for doing that. So I could take a guess that she might... So, what the heck? Let's go on ahead and jump over here. Or, yeah. Because if, if she jumps there, if I jump here... Wait, wait, so, right. Ah. All right, so if she jumped, if she jumped that one, mm, I can't. All right, I'll just jump here anyway. And I've got my third. And so I can show I've got exactly three collections. I've moved forward again. I also have the biggest collection of white. So I will move forward again. And now I could move forward again if I were within striking distance. But I'm not. I could spend the coin to be able to deal with this. But then I'd have to sell a collection. And I can't sell a collection yet. That's the other big thing you can do in this game. Once you've got three of a given, three or more of a given uh, type of collection, or a collection of size, three or bigger, you can optionally sell that collection to make coins. And I, I'm gonna have to do that to be able to move past this one. So anyway, so that was my turn. It is Jen's turn. And Jen will jump over here. And so she is starting to make a collection. And looking ahead, then Jen can jump here, Jen can jump here, and she'll eventually be able to get to that green. It might make sense for me to try and get that. Although, and again, I am not within striking distance of her. Jen, it's very important for her not to put herself into a position where I'm within striking distance. So, hmm. Let's see here. Hmm. Yeah, it's going to be a bit puzzly to try and get into striking distance because we're kind of off uh, skew from each other. So I think I'm going to head over here because... I want to start making a bigger collection. Because remember, after I get past this, I need to sell a collection. Now I've got two. If I can get one more blue, I'll have a collection of three. So let's see. Another one comes out. Oh, shoot. All right. Oh, yeah. Um, there should have been one over there, which I forgot to fill in. Durr. And then wherever I just moved. Oh, hey, there's another green. Okay. So now it is Jen's turn. Jen will jump over here get a pink, and she's on her way to that green that she ultimately needs. And so it's my turn. I will, hey, I can't complain. Let's just go on, oh, and again, don't forget to fill in the space I just was in. Let's go ahead and get this green. So now I'm getting a bigger collection of green. Okay, and there's another green. Oh, they're popping up everywhere. And so Jen jumps up here, and um, show, so boom. And fill in the space she has left behind. And Jen says, oh, look, hey, I happen to have a green. And I've got a green and a black. And I have exactly three. And I've got the biggest pink. And just like that, Jen, with one tile, has caught all the way back up to me. And now we're both stuck within striking distance. Uh, or need to get within striking distance together. Or spend a coin to skip past this one. All right, so that was it for Jen. It is my turn. And I, I'm just going to jump right back here and get this green that popped up. So now, in addition to everything else I could do, I can sell, when you sell a collection, what you do is, remember it has to be at least three of a given color, you take the entire collection, and um, right, two of them are removed, and then any ones that remain, you know, these are the ones that uh, they, they went, any ones that remain get converted into coins. So if you have a big collection of like five green, you would turn them into three coins. All right, but, uh, so I've done that, 
And I am, let's see, this is interesting. Yeah, we're, we're still way too off. I'm going to go on ahead and spend the coin I've got. So that's gone. Two, because I'm not in striking distance, but I'm going to say I've done this anyway. And then I am going to sell this collection, which will give me a coin. And these go away. And hey, Coach Robbery, I have to have a blue. I've got a blue. And hey, uh, Coach Robbery, I have white. I've got a white. And hey, now I'm on to be on the run. I have to have less than seven. I've got one, two, three. So I finished that. Oops. And then I have to own equal or less coins than my opponent. We have an equal number of coins. So I've hit the scales. And then I have to have two different, same as this one over here, white, red, and pink. I've got the white. I don't have the red. So that was a big move. That was definitely worth the coin. Okay, so it is Jen's turn. And what is she going to do? All right, well, she needs to be able to... to you know, well, first of all, does she think she could get within striking distance of me? Uh, that would be tricky. So I don't think she's going to do that. She is... Oh, but I mean, she, I mean, there's no reason to jump right now. She might as well wait until she's got stuff she can uh, spend. And the problem is she doesn't have any blue or white. So it's going to be tougher for her to get past those things because she wasn't focusing on getting those. So if she can, she should start trying to collect this stuff. She will jump over here and get a blue, her fourth collection. All right. Oh, and a white. So she'll probably jump back and get that. And now it's my turn. I need a red or pink. And I can just jump over here and get a red. And I can say, hey, look, I've got a white and a pink. Boom, done. And by the way, now I need a collection with four. So I need to get two more blues or three more reds or three more pinks to be able to move to the next one. Meanwhile, Jen is uh, basically saving up for a rainy day. So where is she going to go next? Right, so she's got her blue she needs. She needs to get a white. She'll just jump right back up here and get that white. So she is in position to make a big move later. All righty. And then it's my turn. And what did I need? Oh, I needed, um, I needed, so I need some more blue. Which, ah, I can't get to them. All righty. So let's jump over here. Get my second red. All right. And then I'll be able to get my blue next time. And Jen says, oh, hey, how about that? Uh, oh, no. Oh, no. Jen would like to point out she is in striking distance right now. But she has to move. It's after you move that you can complete the objective. So I just moved into striking distance. Jen has to move. And if she moves over here, she's no longer in striking distance. Over here, she's no longer in striking distance. And of course, she's not allowed to move into the same spot. So it was for a brief moment there was striking distance. But then it uh, fell apart. So what does Jen want? Well, she can look into the future and see. Well, she's got the pink. So she'll come over here and get the white. So she just keeps on building up bigger collections that she can convert into coins and let her just bribe her way past any problems. All right, so, and now it's my turn. And I'm going to jump down here. Now there's a brief window to get into striking distance. All right, there we go. And right, I just need one more blue or two more red because remember, I need a collection with four things in it. Okay, and then Jen, meanwhile. Um... Yeah, okay. I think... Oh, wait. Did I just go or did Jen just go? I've forgotten. Oh, dear. Ah! Um, let's see. I think it was my turn. If not, folks, that's what the Klingon subtitles are for. I might have gotten myself a little mixed up there. So I'm just going to get some white. And Jen says, well, she knows she wants to get some as well. She's saving up for a big payday. And I'll, yeah. Can she get to striking distance? No, she can't. She'll come over here. And so now she's got a collection. And because she knows she's eventually going to get stuck down here too, and she'll need to have a collection of four. She's just getting those collections ready earlier. Okay. Boom. And, all right. So finally, bippity boom. All right, and I will show that I have a collection of four. I have moved forward again. And I need to have three collections with a one, a two, and a three. That's a problem. I've got three collections with a two, a two, and a four. That is very, very tricky. Um, so I think I'll just go on ahead and spend this coin I've got. 
to go on ahead and skip past that. And now we need to be rivalry directly adjacent to each other. Not diagonally, that's a different one, but directly next to each other. Or, well, I don't have a coin. I could sell this collection to give myself two coins, and then I could pay to go again. Um, right. Interest. All righty. And that's interesting. You know what? I am. I'm going to go on ahead and sell this collection I built up. So two of them go, and I keep two coins. And then I'm going to use one of these coins to get past the rivalry, so I don't have to worry about that. And now, for small fry, I have to be in a situation where I cannot sell a single collection. I can't sell this collection or this collection, so I'm there. Now, Coach Robbery, I've already done it, so I'm there. Now, I need um, a collection with only two. I do have a collection, uh, or I, I need only collections with two, which I've got, so I'm there. And then I've got another. I need pinks. Oh, I don't have any pinks. Oh! But that was a pretty good move. And, I mean, if I could just make a few more moves, I could win. Because it's either when you've gone all the way around twice, or you've lapped somebody. So I'm coming up on Jen. That's pretty nice. But, um, to get here, I would need a pink, which I don't have. But I'll be able to get one in, in short order. I can get this pink one over here. And then, although, oh! Yeah, well, anyway. I have another chance to be next to somebody, but uh, I've already passed that. Then, to get to into Nottingham, I have to have only one coin. Although that is worded a bit weirdly. It says only one coin, but it really is, according to the rules, um, zero or one coins. Um, so that's kind of misleading. It really should say less than two coins. All right. Um, but anyway, thank you. I'll stop right there. And so it is Jen's turn. And remember, Jen can, all, anytime she wants, she can just spend that coin and make a burst past here. And she is in a bit of danger of getting lapped. So what is she going to do? I think she will move down here. Get this. And we are adjacent. Which is one of the things that's coming up. I wonder if now is a good time. Let's say Jen is not within striking distance. So she's going to spend her coin to get past this. She has to sell a collection. So she will sell this black collection, which gives her a coin. She needs to have blue, which she does. She needs to have white, which she does. She has to have less than seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, it has to be less! Oh! Oh! Uh. Right. But, okay, she will spend this coin to get past this because she has too much stuff saved up. And then, own equal to or less coins. Jen has no coins. I've got one, so she moves up again. Have two different. Uh, she's got pink and white, so she's done that. Uh, group with four. Oh! If she had one more. Right. Because here's the interesting thing. She's got the next one. She has a group of three, two, and one. If she had a group of four, she'd have this. And then she'd be able to do the directly and catch up without having to spend a coin like I did. Because we're adjacent to each other right now. Oh, shoot. Ugh. And unfortunately, Jen does not have a group of four. And I'm about to move away. So she's missing her window to do this. She could sell this group right now, and then she'd get another coin to get past this. But then she um, would need to have three, and she, uh, you know, uh, three, you know, with a one, two, and three, and she wouldn't have that. So, ah, all right. So she started to catch up, but she didn't quite make it. That's fine. Okay, so it is my turn, and I still need a pink, and so I will come over here. Which thereupon I can show I've done this. And I also I only have one coin, so I've done that. And now, to move again, I need to have only one collection. I've got three collections. So now, I've got to build these collections up big enough that I can sell them to get down to only one collection. Uh, and that could be a problem if I can't collect the right colors. So, it is Jen's turn. And by the way, we're within striking distance of each other again. But that is well past. What is Jen going to do now? Is she going to try and get a fourth? Um, uh, yeah, what could she do? She could get a blue. That would, Then she'd have her size two for the next thing. But she needs to get a four. So she would have to get one of these white ones way over here. And so now this is where the thinking really starts coming in. Because you see what your immediate goals, but your next goals as well. And if you can do some set collection to be able to fulfill multiple goals, you can have huge, big, massive, powerful swings. And so what makes the most sense? Is Jen just going to go on ahead and get some blue? So then she's got the one, two, three. If from there, would she be able to get the four? Um, you know, hmm... Yeah, I think she'll just come down here and get a blue. So now she's got her group of one, her group of two, her group of three. Okay. And meanwhile, I need to get blues and reds so I can sell these collections. 
uh, or I'm sorry, whites or reds. So let's go on ahead and jump over here and get a white. And I could sell this collection now, but there's no reason to. Unless again, I, I just want to spend a coin and get past that, but then I need a green, which I don't have. So I'm just going to try and get this for real and, you know, and save up so I can do uh, several things. So that was that. And Jen, so uh, she could come over here and get this pink. So now she's got two. She's got a one, a two, and a three, and a three. So as soon as she can get a white, which she can get, she could sell that and complete this. So that'll be a good move for her. All right. And it is my turn. And I need to get a red or a white or a pink. And yes, boom, come down here. Okay, and we're adjacent to each other again. Oh, which is, oh no, Jen's gonna benefit from that, but I've moved, there's nothing to do. But before I'm done, I'm gonna go on ahead and sell this collection and sell this collection. So, I now only have one collection, like at the beginning of the game. And I got a whole bunch of coins. I could spend them to get past that, but I need green and blue and black. I got to do all these steps again. But on the second time around, um, I've got to be able to deal with long live the king, which means I have to have at least four coins to be able to make that final step. Okay, so that was it for me. And Jen, she's in position, but she has to move. You always have to move. And Jen is going to move over here. Okay, and just like that, Jen has a, oh, she has a group of four, but if she comes back here next turn, she'll have a group of five, so she can make more coins. There's no reason. She's not in any danger of getting laps. She'll wait a little bit. And back to me. I need to get some green. Um, or I can spend coins, because I also need a green, black, and blue. And then I need to have three, and so on. And let's see, so there's a green, and there's a green. I could just come over here and get to the green next turn. All right. And then Jen says, hey, you know what? I'm gonna come over here. Uh, she's got an even bigger collection. And now she'll sell this, or first of all, oh wait, oh, no, no, no. Does this have to be exactly four or does it have to be at least four? That's the one problem with this game. You can't really trust these descriptions because they're a little vague. Um, and it's a shame. This is the craziest thing. This rule book, the last two pages have nothing on them. So you have to go digging in the rule book to find these descriptions. I'm sorry, folks. I'm doing final thoughts. Hold on a second. It must have at least, it's at least four loot tiles. Jen's got, um, five. So that's enough. So she's done this. She will now sell this to give herself three coins. And she also says, hey, I've got a one, a two, and a three. And we used to be directly adjacent. She doesn't mind selling a coin to do that. Um, she has to be in a situation where she cannot sell a single. So she could, she'll could sell these. That gives her another coin. She's done that. She has no red. Have um, And have collections with only two. So she needs to get another green. Shoot. So she's uh, stopped as well. But, um, you know, and she's got three coins, I've got three coins, she's got stuff, and she wants to hold on to these because she knows she needs these up here. So she could dump these to try and deal with stuff, but it'd be better to get another green if possible um, so that she can show, or, but she also needs a red. Although, again, she could spend coins whenever she wants. These coins don't win you the game. It's who makes it all the way around first, twice. That will win you the game of Robin of Loxley. And that should give you a basic idea of how the game works. And in case you're wondering what Jen and I think, we love it. This game is just a blast from designer Uwe Rosenberg, who is definitely known for these days for two things. Big, grandiose, super heavy, complex worker placement euros or polyomino style Tetris games. And don't get me wrong, he does a great job at both of those things, but it is so nice to see him spreading his wings and doing something completely different. And that is totally what this game is. Um, you know, it feels like an entire game made out of one of those chess puzzles that you might have seen in puzzle books of, you know, how, with, you know, with the current situation, how can you use your piece to do whatever you need to do? That's what this game is entirely, because you've just got one knight who is bouncing around all over the place, but the thing that makes this game so special is, um, you know every step of the way what it is you have to do. And while you might be in a situation where, okay, I'm just going around and grabbing things and I can't quite get what I need right now, 
That's okay, because not only do you have to focus on what you need right now, but you need to focus on what you need in three or four turns, because the whole thing is laid out for you. And um, that is an awesome, lovely level of puzzling that, you know, this my short-term and my long-term goals, my short-term goals can always be met just by jettisoning some uh, coins, as an example. Although I don't want to burn through all my coins, because at the very, very end, the final step, I need four coins, which is a lot. And chances are, as somebody gets closer and closer to the end, you are quicker um, to spend these coins to catch up with them instead of just slowly bouncing around, looting a whole bunch of stuff so that you can get what is the most satisfying thing about this game? Huge mega turns. Where, I mean, you might in a single turn, after having collected all the right stuff and being ready to spend a couple of coins and being in the right position relative to your opponent or relative to positions on the board or whatever, you can in one turn, oh, I've done that one and that one and that one and that one and that one. Okay, I'm going to pay to get past that one and that one. But then I've done this one and this one. And, okay, I'll pay for that one too. And hey, that's because then I've done this one and that'll give me what I need to be able to do this one and this one. That kind of move is definitely something that you're going to see happen over the course of the game as you get these bigger and bigger collections that can fulfill more and more stuff and it's awesome and so I mean it might often feel like you are completely left in the dust you are about to get lapped which is an instant lose but then you can have these huge mega surges if you plan properly and it is so much fun I have to admit I'm not a particularly big fan of chess but I do enjoy the knight's movement it's you know kind of this this last uh, this you know this fast, light-hearted, and puzzly thing. Always moving in these L shapes, trying to figure out, well, if I get to that, then that means I can get to that. But if, but I need to get to this other thing, so I need to go over there, and then over there, and then that will kind of put me on a different axis, and then I can get into position. And... Um, but it'll take me three turns, and I can see you need that green as well. Are you going to be able to get to it before me, in which case I might as well just burn a coin or sell a collection? Um, or do I wait? Because there's nothing keeping me from just, you know, biding my time until I get a bunch of stuff. Except for some particular uh, objective that requires I only have a little bit of stuff. And then I've got too much stuff and i got to sell it all. I, 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 this is a lot of fun. And really, my only complaint, which I briefly mentioned in the run-through, is the descriptions of some of these, you'd think it'd all be crystal clear clear because they actually use text on all these but uh, there will be a few that you probably the first few times you want to play you want to check to make sure you understand because the way some of these are worded really the biggest hurdle to overcome with um, you know parsing the way these tiles are written is that if it doesn't say ex the word exactly um, then chances are it doesn't have to be exact. I mean, they still sound like they need to be exact, but they don't. Like this one, uh, have a collection with four. This can be handled with a collection of five, which it makes me wonder, why doesn't this say a collection greater than three? Because then that would be super precise in the same amount of words. Um, but again, you just have to take on faith that, yeah, if it doesn't say exactly or less than or greater than, then it's kind of an inclusive thing. But even still, there are a few where you might think, oh, you understand what it is, but then you check the rules. That's the tiniest of black eyes, which in, in what is overwise, otherwise, an absolutely delightful, fast-paced little puzzle for two. Um, when I played this back in December and I covered it in a roundup, I said at the time two things. This is the most fun. Uh, this is the most fun I've had playing a new Uwe Rosenberg game in years, and that is true. I love it to pieces. The other thing I said was it was the best two-player game of 2019, two-player only. I would amend that now because Mandala, which I covered last month, I think is still a bit better. Mandala is amazing, but this game is just shy of amazing. And if there had been a little, tiny bit more clarity on the objectives, I think this could have. This, this might still hold as my best two-player game in a year. By the way, that was full of really excellent two-player games. I'm thinking about Foothill and Mandala and, and several other games besides. But even still, Robin of Loxley, uh, The Contest of Thieves is the bee's knees. Absolutely adored. Totally a keeper. And that is the rundown, folks. Thanks very much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Uh, bye bye